Hello everyone. Welcome to the flip lesson about mean absolute deviation. As you watch this video, I encourage you to pause it as many times as you need to, rewind it, and copy notes on what you see. Before I teach you how to calculate the mean absolute deviation of a data set, let's first define what it means. The mean absolute deviation, or the MAD, as we will call it, is the average distance between each data value and the mean. So before I show you what that actually represents, think about what that is. Basically, you're taking how far away things are from the mean and averaging that. So you're taking a bunch of things, finding how far away they are from the mean, and then averaging those numbers. So what the mean absolute deviation shows you is a distribution. It shows you how far apart the data is. So to calculate the mean absolute deviation, what we first do is we find the mean of the data given, then we find the absolute values of how much each value deviates from the mean. Basically all you're doing is finding the distance that each value is from the mean. It's kind of like finding absolute value. And then you find the average of those deviations. So you find the average, then you find how far away each number is from the average, and then you average those distances. Seems confusing, but let's look at an example. Before I show you this example, remember that the greater the mean absolute deviation is, the further away the values tend to be from the mean. So let's look at an example. Let's say we have the numbers 3, 6, 6, 7, 8, 11, 15, and 16. We don't know what the numbers mean, but let's pretend like we have them. To calculate the mean absolute deviation, I'm going to follow these three steps, and they're illustrated on the next page. If you want to try this, you could pause the video as I go through it. But step one is to find the mean. So if I take these numbers and find the mean, that means you add them all together and divide by how many you have. Since there are eight values, I add them together, divide by eight, and I get the mean to be nine. So that's my average. After that is the fun part. After that, you need to find the distance of each value from that mean, and you're going to find their absolute values. So you need to remember, when you're finding the absolute value of something, it's a positive number. When you find the distance of something, it's always positive. So that's why you're finding the absolute value. So even though when you subtract the numbers from the mean, you might get negative numbers, you take the positive version of that number. So you can see, in the column I'm highlighting, we have all of our values. And in the second column, we have how far away each one of those values is from the number 9. So you can see 3, for instance, is 6 away from 9. And 16, for instance, is 7 away from 9. Okay, it doesn't matter in which direction, it just matters how far away it is. That's the hardest part. So you, what you now do is if you take a look at this diagram, that shows you all of the values and how far away they are from the mean. Then what you do for step three is you find the mean of those distances. So you add them all together, and then since you have eight, when you add them together, you do 30 divided by eight, and you get 3.75. So let's put that to action. Let's see how it works if we have this example. Let's say at an amusement park, the maximum speeds of the eight roller coasters in miles per hour are 58, 88, 40, 60, 72, 66, 80, and 48. Let's do step one. And again, if you'd like to pause the video and try this, feel free. Step one is to calculate the mean. So let's do that. All right, if we add all of the data values together, 
we do 88 plus 40, sorry, 58 plus 88 plus 40 plus 60 plus 72 plus 66 plus 80 plus 48. And when we add all of those together, we get 512. So we divide 512 by how many values we have. And in this case, it's 8. So we get 60, uh, when we do that, we get an average of 64 miles per hour. That's my mean. Now what I need to do is I need to find how far away are each of these values from that mean of 64. So maybe creating a table would be an easy way to keep yourself organized. Step two is to calculate the deviations. So I have my values and I have my distances from 64. Remember to keep those values positive. So my first value is 58. From 64, that is 6 away. Next I have 88. From 64, that is 24. Okay, next, I have 40, which is also 24 away. So you can see, even though 88 and 40 are completely different, they have the same distance from 64. And then I have 60, and 60 is 4 away from 64. And then I have 72, which is 8 away. Then I have 66, which is 2 away. Then I have 80, which is 16 away. And then lastly, I have 48, which is also 16 away. So, I've calculated the mean, and I've calculated my deviations. Now, step three is to find the mean of those deviations. So, we're going to average the deviations. Well, if we add all of those together, we end up with a nice easy value of 100. Okay? 6 plus 24 is 30. Add that to 24, and you get 54. Plus 4 is 58. Plus 8 is 66, plus 2 is 68, and then if you add 32, you get 100. And then if you divide that by 8, you get 12.5. That value, 12.5, that is your mean absolute deviation. That means that on average, the values in our data set are 12 and a half miles per hour away from the average, which is 64. So there's one more little detail I'm going to throw in here. And it's, you saw it in the box of Worcester plot lesson, but it's the concept of an outlier. In the box of Worcester plot lesson, we talked about an outlier is present when we have a value that's really far away from the norm. Well, the mean absolute deviation gives us a better calculation of what an outlier is. One of the general rules is that an outlier is more than two mean absolute deviations from the mean. So to calculate an outlier, 
want you to think about that. If you double 12.5, you get 25. Outliers, in this case, would be more than 25 away from 64. So, if I add 64 and 25, that gives me a value of 89. Do you see any values that are higher than 89? If not, then there are no outliers on the high end. But what about if we do 64 minus 25? We end up getting 39. Do you see any values below 39? The answer is no. So in this example, there are no outliers. But some examples will have outliers. But generally, what I wanted you to get from this video was a way to calculate the mean absolute deviation as well as an understanding about what it means. So I hope after watching you have that. Now what I want you to do is go on the website and fill out the Google form to rate your understanding. Thank you for watching.